Hello and welcome to the RISCOS community. This video demonstrates how to resize a RISCO SSD card for the Raspberry Pi to make full use of the available capacity. To perform the resize you will need to gather the following items of hardware. A Raspberry Pi, a freshly imaged RISCO SSD card, see our video linked in the description on how to do this, a second computer that is able to run Linux, either natively or as a virtual machine, a USB SD card reader, and if necessary an adapter, and finally a USB stick. We will demonstrate using a Microsoft Windows machine running the slacks.org image in Oracle VirtualBox. Links to these are in the description below. As part of this process includes reformatting of the SD card, we need to back up the contents of the card to our USB stick. The Create SEC self-extracting utility can help us with this task. In a web browser, open the riscosopen.org website and navigate to the download section. Once there, scroll down to find the miscellaneous section and open that page. When loaded, click on the link to download Create SEC Self Extracting and place that on the USB stick. You can now eject the USB stick from this device. As it is very likely that our USB stick is larger than 2GB, we need to copy the FAT32FS module into the loader partition of our SD card before doing any further steps. This will allow us to access the data stored on the USB stick during the data recovery part of the process. On the Raspberry Pi, launch RISC-OS and then open the root directory of the SD card. Shift double click the Pling Boot application to open the Pling Boot application directory and then proceed to open the loader partition. Within Pling Boot, navigate to where FAT32FS is stored. RO520 hook, boot, pre-desk, FAT32FS, then copy via drag and drop the FAT32FS module to the loader partition. Preparations are now finished, so it is safe to shut down the Raspberry Pi. Over on our second computer, we need to launch our Linux environment. In this case, we are using VirtualBox on a Windows machine running the slacks.org live distribution. Our first step in VirtualBox is to add a USB filter for our USB SD card reader so that we can read the SD card within the virtual environment. To help us identify which USB device is our reader, before plugging it in, display the list of attached USB devices in VirtualBox. Now plug in the USB card reader and dismiss any error messages. Go back to the virtual box and add a USB filter. We can see that the reader is now shown at the bottom of the list. Keep the card reader attached and launch the virtual machine. This virtual machine is configured to run as a live CD, meaning that it does not persist files or settings across launches, so make sure to keep this session running until the end of the process. After going through boot up, open a terminal window. The default keyboard layout is US, so if necessary, switch the keyboard layout. In this case, we need a British layout. Before going further, open the file manager to determine the device name assigned to our USB card reader. In this case, it is slash dev slash SDA, as we ignore the one which represents the first partition. Now, we need to download Chris Johns's ADFS tools from GitHub using wget. Type wget space https colon slash slash github.com slash c dash jo slash adfs dash tools slash archive slash refs slash heads slash main dot zip and then press enter. Once downloaded, unzip the archive by typing unzip space main dot zip. Now move into the adfs-tools-main directory by typing cd adfs-tools-main. We are now ready to read the loader partition from our SD card. Type dot slash get underscore loader dot py space slash dev slash sda space loader. 
This command reads the loader partition off of our SD card mounted on the device, dev SDA, and stores that in the file loader. Now that we have extracted the loader partition, we should eject the SD card. Type eject space slash dev slash SDA to safely eject. Sorry about the typo here. Once ejected, place the SD card back into your Raspberry Pi. Back at the Raspberry Pi, boot into Risco S to start the SD card backup process. You will also need the USB stick on which we will be storing our backup files. Insert the USB stick into a free USB port of the Raspberry Pi and, once mounted, open the root directory. We will also need to create a RAM disk, so open the task manager by clicking select on the switcher icon and scroll down to the RAM disk entry. Once there, drag the bar out until it reads at least 120 megabytes. We've gone for around 230 in this example. Close the task manager and open the root of the RAM disk. Copy the create SEC utility from the USB stick and place it in the RAM disk. We need to change the file type of this file, so click menu or the middle mouse button and navigate to set type in the file submenu. Change the existing entry to read utility and then click to accept this change. We can now expand the create SEC archive by double clicking, which generates the Pling create SEC application. Two of the directories that we need to back up need special care. These are Pling boot and utilities. So let us start by creating a new Pling boot directory in the RAM disk. Click menu and then enter Pling boot in the new directory submenu dialog. Open this newly created directory by holding down shift and double clicking. Now open the root directory of the SD card and also open Pling boot by holding down shift and double clicking. Select all the files by dragging across the selection and then deselect loader by clicking adjust or the right hand mouse button. Then copy these selected files across to the RAM disk using drag and drop. Close both of the Pling boot directories and now copy utilities from the root of the SD card. Start the Pling create SEC application by double clicking. You will now see its icon appear on the icon bar. We will now start the backup process. Drag Pling boot from the RAM disk onto the create SEC icon bar icon. In the create SEC window in output, type pling boot slash util, but do not press enter yet. We first need to set the current selected directory to the root of our USB stick by clicking menu and choosing set directory. With this done, click run in the create SEC window and the archive will start being created on the USB stick. This will take some time, so wait until the title of the log window changes from create SEC brackets running to create SEC brackets completed. Once completed, close the log window. Now drag utilities from the RAM disk onto the create SEC icon bar icon. Change the output to read utilities slash util and then click run. Again, this will take some time to complete, so wait until the log window title changes to create SEC brackets completed, and then close it. We can now move on to the remaining directories on the SD card. Follow the same procedure for the apps directory, remembering to change the output file name to apps slash util. Follow the same procedure for the diversions directory, remembering to change the output file name to diversions slash util. Follow the same procedure for the documents directory, remembering to change the output file name to documents slash util. Follow the same procedure for the printing directory, remembering to change the output file name to printing slash util.
Follow the same procedure for the programming directory, remembering to change the output file name to programming slash util. Follow the same procedure for the public directory, remembering to change the output file name to public slash util. And finally, follow the same procedure for the sources directory, remembering to change the output file name to sources slash util. Backup of all the data from our SD card is now complete. Close the Create SEC application by clicking Menu and choosing Quit from the icon bar menu. Also, as we are going to eject the USB stick, reset the current selected directory to the root of the SD card. Click Menu and choose Set Directory. We can delete the RAM disk as we're now finished with that. Click Menu and choose Quit, accepting the pop-up message. Finally, eject the USB stick by choosing Dismount from the icon bar menu, and then physically remove the stick from the Raspberry Pi. The next step is to format the SD card. Open the Utilities directory, followed by the Caution subdirectory, and then run Pling HForm. For the first option of Drive Connection, choose M for SDFS. Accept the Drive option of 0. We are now presented with the detected shape of the drive along with its current format. Choose N to choose a new shape. For each option, accept the suggested values. For the defect list, choose A to continue without adding any more defects. Accept the I option to initialize the drive. Decline the soak test by accepting N. Accept the Y option to make the disk bootable. Accept the Y option to allow long file names. Accept the proposed large file allocation unit. Finally, enter Y when asked if you want to proceed. This will erase everything on this drive. Return back to the desktop once completed. We can now confirm that the entire capacity is available by checking the free space. Now proceed to shut down the machine and press escape when the missing disk error messages occur. Remove the SD card from the Raspberry Pi and reinsert it into the card reader on the second machine. Copy the previously backed up loader partition using the command dot slash put underscore loader dot py space slash dev slash sda space loader. Once this completes, the system will detect this new partition and likely open a file manager window. Close these and continue. We now need to claim the space used by the loader partition using the command dot slash claim underscore frags dot py space slash dev slash sda. Lastly, we need to add the loader partition into the ADFS directory by using the command dot slash add underscore loader dot py space slash dev slash sda. The loader partition is now reinstated, so eject the SD card by using the command eject space slash dev slash sda. Place the SD card back into the Raspberry Pi and then boot. Because the card is virtually blank, we need to manually enter the desktop. Type desktop at the command prompt. Accept the error about incomplete startup. Open the SD card and navigate into the loader directory. Load FAT32FS by double-clicking on the FAT32FS module file. Before continuing with the restore, rename the SD card back to RISC-OS-PI to avoid any potential issues. We can now insert the USB stick containing our previously backed up files. 
open the root directory of both the USB stick and the SD card and rearrange both windows appropriately. Copy all of the archives from the USB stick onto the SD card. This will take some time to complete. Once completed, expand each archive in turn by double-clicking each of them. As we no longer need the USB stick, feel free to dismount and remove it from the machine. Once all of the archives have been expanded, delete each archive file as they are no longer needed. The final task is to move the loader partition from the root directory back into Pling Boot. Open Pling Boot by holding down Shift and double clicking. Move the loader partition by holding down Shift and dragging to the Pling Boot directory. It is critical that this is a move and not a copy due to the special way that the disk has been formatted. We have now completed the restore, so close any open windows and restart the machine. If everything has gone to plan, you should be presented with the RISC OS Pi desktop as before, but with the full capacity of your SD card available to use. Please consider subscribing to be notified of any new RISC OS community content. Thanks for watching.